So out of the box or out of the wall, whatever you want to call it, we have... Oh, I did it! The Town That Dreaded Sunfall. However, this one was made in 2014. Is it a sequel to a true story that happened in 1946, but a movie that was made in 1977? We're about to find out. Marky Mark! Chase Duck with the Blue Futon reviewing the town that dreaded Sunfall. So what's this movie about? It is not a sequel. I say this movie plays homage to the 1977 movie because there is footage from that movie in this movie, as well as I call it someone spark plug and everything like that. But it also connects to the 1946 real life killings that happened in Texarkana. So do you like this film? I thought it was actually a well-crafted film that I was pleasantly surprised that, you know, I was expecting, oh God, another slasher. It's not going to do anything original. But it does add a little bit of oomph to it that I was not expecting. So, let's talk about the positives. The acting. The acting is really good in this film. For a movie that came out in 2014, kind of a Blumhouse, straight to DVD-esque type of movie, you're expecting some garbage shit to happen. Well, garbage shit really doesn't happen. When you, I'm shocked. When the Texas Ranger is in the movie and it's Anthony Anderson, I'm like, oh shit, didn't know he was in this movie. And then like Dennis O'Hear, I'm like, oh shit, didn't know he was in this movie. And there's other people who are just like, didn't know he was in this movie. Wow, this is actually a star-studded cast for a movie that, you know, not a lot of people are going to see. So I'm pretty pleasantly surprised on that. But let's talk about the kills. I think the kills in his go to the ump extreme, especially ex- compared to the 1977 one. Because you know for the fact that 1977 one was more based on the true story, the 1946 one. And this one really isn't. So they're like, you know what? We're going to make some kills that are similar to the 1977 movie. However, we're going to make it more grotesque, more effed up, and just more like, what the fuck is happening? And again, they have to have the trombone kill in this movie. And they do it again because they're like, this is weird. It's original. Did this guy really kill someone with the trombone? If that's true, we have to put it in this movie. We really, really do. And it does a good job of paying homage to the movie and to the real life events. Because you know what? They play the movie. They have the same nicknames. And they do the same style of killings in the same manner. So you could kind of say that's a positive and negative. Because there's elements to saying, you know what? We're paying tribute to something that happened in 46. The horrific killings. As well as this movie. But now... We're doing something a little bit different about who the killers are. Is it a twist at the end? Who's actually dead or not? What is actually going to occur? Is there going to be another sequel? So you could go to that tropes of like, you know what? We're going to those tropes of like, oh, that's the killer. And of course, it's got to be that person because you didn't see the face. So like, okay, I kind of saw that coming from 110 miles away. And of course, they go to the ending where they can't just end movies anymore. Like horror movies, it can't just be she survived the end it's got to be oh there's a shadow what do you know so you're like come on now and even though this pays homage to the 1977 movie it's almost a blueprint of like oh wait a minute because i watched this no shit back to back and so you're like that person's gonna die that way that person's gonna die this way oh those two people are in the house even though it wasn't a married couple that occurred so that it's gonna happen a lot more sexual stuff in this movie as well. This is a hard R when it comes to sexuality. There's blowjobs. There's no joke like a sex scene in a hotel room where I'm just like, how is that not really happening? And like for the dude, like if that's happening, how is he not like aroused? Like I never understood that. Maybe be, I'm just a, I'm just a loser maybe. But as a movie as a whole, originality isn't there. But I think you give it a pass. Because of what it is trying to do with the source material from 77 and 46. So overall, The Town That Dreaded Sundown is surprisingly a good movie. Like, I was shocked. The acting's good. The kills are there. The atmosphere is there. And it's only like 88 minutes? 86 minutes? So it doesn't overstay its welcome. It knows what it's there to do. And it does it, period, dot. It adds a little bit more to the lore. Even though you could say, you know what? They are trying to pay homage where they kind of make their own story at the same time. But it is what it is. I'm pleasantly surprised that this movie is a watchable experience. 
So the town that dreaded sundown will receive a 3 out of 5 of food charge. It goes at 60%. Let's see the Critics News Course gave this one. The Critics, a 66% with 29 of them. Audience score, an exact 40%, just like the original with 2,500. No Critic Consensus. I'm going to put money that the people, at least the audience scores, that reviewed this one never saw the 1977 version. If you hear the oven in my background, I'm sorry. But there we go. 40, 66, 60. Chase Talk with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, no, things Blue Topia, you Blue Tonys. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. And seriously, like, I was close to giving this a 70. But then I realized, yeah, they took a little bit too much from the past to try to make it, you know, homage. But you need a little bit more originality. And I'm not original. What does that even mean? Thank <laughs> you.